This video is brought to you by Level 8. Welcome back you beautiful people, we are Gemma and Campbell and this week we have had to abandon our home on wheels early and go on a secret mission to Greece. Well, I think we are well and truly lost now. Yeah, we basically have just been following this road to try and find these thermal baths and Google Maps has taken us down the wrong way again, which as you guys know is a recurring theme for us. Just this time I thought a scooter might be alright rather than a big motorhome. But maybe just not a 50cc scooter that literally just goes to taking us forever to get anywhere. <laughs> okay, so while Gemma tries to figure out what's going on with Google Maps, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to catch you guys up why exactly we are back in Greece, more specifically the beautiful island of Kos. So we are going to be here for the next four days on a very short and sweet trip because as Gemma said, we're on a secret mission. We're going to tell you all about that later on. But Ellie basically had to get booked in for an MOT this week. And yeah, we just thought it was a perfect opportunity to come catch some last minute winter sunshine and explore a brand new island that we've never been to before. So I guess to for all to make sense, let's flash back to when we were in rainy Glasgow, catching a flight all the way across the coast. Oh guys, we have just had an absolute nightmare. Basically, we are just making our way to the wedding. It turned out of a corner, there was a massive boulder just by the side of the road. And I just went and absolutely crunched it. Crunched the side of this step off of it. Look at the state of that. It's actually so broken. I don't think you can actually use that. Oh dear. You know the most annoying thing? What's that? Is that when I panic, I don't get my words out properly. So I saw this boulder as we were turning around the bend and I said to Campbell, I was like, slow, 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 slow. And I was getting more like, trying to basically get Campbell to stop. But for some reason, I just kept saying slow. Which I think did more damage because I, instead of actually just stopping, I drove over it slowly. Oh, oh. Ellie, I'm sorry. Oh, what are we like, honestly? Oh. Oh. Guys, this weather is absolutely not a vibe. Today, we're going to drop Ellie off at the garage, get her MOT done, fingers crossed, all goes well. And I cannot think of a better day to be actually leaving Scotland for a little bit, going to Greece for a few days and catching some early, I guess, summer sunshine, because this is miserable. Oh, what a day. Okay, so before I do drop her off, I just want to make sure that we've got everything like sorted um, because we're basically leaving it with the garage while we go to Greece. And then hopefully by the time we come back, we'll be able to just come pick her up and then go off on our next jolly. Right, make sure the inverter is turned off. Water pump that's been running, turn that off. our flight and the next time we speak to you is we'll be in Greece baby thank you very much have a good night it's definitely not the best start to the trip. I've got a suitcase that Gemma doesn't seem to. We do actually put air tags in our suitcase. Is it in the airport or oh we're getting movement now it's there Okay. Well, that is a relief. Trust me, this would be the worst trip to lose my luggage on. <laughs> so usually we get to this point in a trip, we're both absolutely exhausted, and we have to try and work out how we are going to get to our accommodation. Not this time. This time we are not slumming it. We actually found a really cheap deal for a package holiday, which is not something we've actually ever done before, but right now when I'm really tired, I'm really grateful that I have a minibus just waiting for me to get me to my accommodation. Okay, easy jet holidays. I feel like the last time I did this was when I went on my first lads holiday to Zante. I actually get some, yeah, I actually get some real flashbacks to then. I feel like a teenager again, which is funny because I was going to say the reason we're doing this is because we're now motorhome owners, which means that we're now old age pensioners. So it's nothing but Weathers Original, package holidays and ringtones on full volume from us from now on. Please no one take offence to that. Forever, but we are here. Oh my god, package all of these and coach transfers are not as easy as I thought they were going to be. I'm so ready for bed. It is now, what time is it? 9 a.m. UK time and 1 a.m. cost time. Which I must got that all wrong. It's 1 a.m. cost time, 11 p.m. UK time. Oh, yeah. This is our room. It's very, very basic. We've got a little twin bed, <laughs> desk, bathroom, air conditioning, and I'm very, very tired. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Uh, 
Good morning everybody and welcome to Koss. So we've just woken up and gone down to get breakfast. We're staying at the Atlantis Hotel, just on the northern side of the island. And this is the view that we're admiring from our balcony. We've basically got some palm trees just in front of us in the mountains, like way off in the distance, just kind of hiding in the clouds. And to be honest, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, it's not the best hotel I've ever been to, but we went down and got breakfast. It was very tasty. And we've also had a really good start to the day because we went and got ourselves some scooters. Oh, it's just perfect, isn't it? How much did that cost this us then? Was, well, we decided just to get a little 50cc because it was cheaper and it was 15 euros a day, which is actually not too bad. And it's got a helmet box, which is good. What we just need to make sure we don't do is like what we did in Malta. We're on the second day of having a bike, I think. We snapped the key in the box. So let's not do that again. That wasn't fun. And so what are the plans for today then, babe? So today we are going on a boat trip around three of the islands that are close by to Kos. We're away for about seven and a half hours, so it's like a full on day. I think we get to go swimming in the sea and wander around the islands, maybe a bit of cloud bathing because the sun isn't really out today and I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little bit windy. And I did read that there's also a chance that we might even see some dolphins, which is very exciting because the last time we saw them was when we were on the boat cruise in the Maldives and that was lovely. I will say though about the weather, it is looking very, very windy. So it's maybe not the best day for a boat trip, but as long as it doesn't go as badly as our boat trip that we did in Thailand, then I think we're on to a winner. So actually guys, just before we head off, we just came up with a little bit of an idea. Because the hotel still haven't actually come to put batteries into our safe, and we're looking for somewhere to store like our laptops and stuff so we don't need to take them on this boat cruise, what we've decided to do is lock them inside our suitcase. And we can do that because we've got these brand new level eight suitcases. They were very, very chuffed with on this trip. So this is it here. It's the level eight Voyager one, 28 inches, and you can put it in a check luggage. It's got these two individual zip sets sections with two pockets as well. This is where we keep our air tag so we don't lose our suitcase. And the best part, you just zip it around here and then you can lock it, boom, in there. Now usually we do stick a wee padlock on them but these padlocks are so low quality that anyone with like a toothpick could just come in and actually unlock it. Those locks are very, very high quality and I'm certain that no one will actually be able to break into it. I absolutely love it. We used to use backpacks but last year we decided to change the suitcases because we thought we're getting a little bit old now for this carting around a backpack on our back all the time when we're traveling. So we got some new suitcases and it has been a game changer. Honestly, we always thought that the wheels on a suitcase would be a bit of an issue but these ones are so good that the suitcase can actually wheel itself. Another feature that I absolutely love is this. Really really wide so it just is so easy to like just like move around and you don't feel all that weight. Normally we'd be standing in queues with our big bags and this is just so much easier. I can actually just like push it around like a trolley. It's great. And since we love you guys so much we have got a discount code for this which we will put on the screen below and if you're looking for some new suitcases we cannot recommend Level 8 enough. Cool, I know, this is like very unique, it is very like Captain Hook themed as the name of the boat is. We saw the picture when we were coming in of like the places that we're going to visit and it looks amazing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks so good. <laughs> so, so good. There's some sunbathing here. Yeah. Thank you. So we've just arrived on our first island called Kalimnos um, and it was very, very windy on the boat as you can tell by Gemma's attire. It is cold as expected so I've got all my layers and I'm using my towel as a scarf. Oh, it's like quite chilly. But we're going to go and get some lunch now and yeah, it looks like a proper cute little restaurant literally just on the harbour side. So on this boat trip your lunch is actually included and oh my goodness, this is like a massive plate of I think this is called Gigantis, this um, beans and like a tomato sauce, massive salad which is good, I love the salads here, and some bread and tzatziki. That is so fresh, I don't really know what to tell you what it tastes like apart from kind of salad. But it's very fresh, very good tasty, salad. good salad. And I was just about to say I've never had a salad before that I didn't actually, or I've looked at and thought I don't know if I can finish that. And he's just come around and given us out two more, three more bits of bread. They don't have go half on portions. I tell you, if you are, if you're worried about being hungry on this trip, you don't need to worry about that. Look at how clear that water is though, babe. So, so nice, isn't it? We do get an opportunity to actually go for a swim on this trip and an opportunity to jump off the boat, but oh, 
Going by how cold it was when we were sitting on the boat, I don't know about jumping off the boat and then being like soaking wet hair and everything and not being able to use my towel as a scarf slash blanket because it's wet. How can you not though? Look, it's so beautiful. Right, we're testing the water. Oh, it's nice. Is it? It's actually really nice, uh huh? Okay. It's not the Maldives, <laughs> put it that way, but it's... That's promising. It's not cold. Well, it's not freezing. <laughs> Feel that. Oh, oh. Come on. Right, I'm intrigued now. How cold is cold? It's not freezing, like Gemma said, but I'm not inspired to go diving into the water today. I might be able to brave it later on. Ah, oh, <laughs> brilliant! <laughs> Thank you. I leave you alone in the market for two seconds. It was really funny because um, I asked him, I was like, oh, oh, can I take a photo of you? Can I take a video of you? And I said, I'm doing a video now, can you dance? And he just stood there, he was like, oh, you're funny, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, I can't dance. So he went and brought me a hat. So this part was stopped off at is actually such a cute little town and it has a lot of history to it apparently. We're sailing past a couple of little spots on the way into the bay and there was a place called the Mermaid Cave which had like a swing hang hanging from it and apparently there was actually an old school just built into the side of the cave as well because back in the day when the Italians actually invaded here they banned people from speaking Greek so the only way they could actually learn how to speak Greek was by going and learning it in secret. So that's why there was like this kind of hidden little cave with steps going up into the bay. We almost missed the boat, but what have we got? Right, okay, but it was worth it. When we were getting off the boat, they said there is a little stall with homemade donuts. So I was like, oh, excellent. I saw the queue was like massive for it, so I thought definitely need to try these out. Oh my goodness. The women like loaded them into this little bucket. This is a small. There's like seven donuts in there because she gave me extra. And piled the sugar on them. And we've also got a free shot of Uzo to welcome us back onto the boat. Party! <laughs> a couple of chasers for the Ozu. Oh, Mihito, it was happy hour, it but we couldn't know. And it's someone's birthday on board, so cheers! I mean, I'm getting back on Captain Hook. You're getting on the Dora the Explorer <laughs> boat. No, Dory. Dory the Explorer. Or oh, Nemo. Yeah. And so we're on to our last stop of the day. I think it's this little island called Sirimos. And it's pretty much just this tiny little village with a white sand beach. It looks so, so cute. And again, the water is just like crystal clear. So as you can see, the sun isn't exactly splitting the skies today, but we have had such a good fun day. We visited three islands. The first one we stopped at, we had some lunch at. There was fresh donuts. And the second one we stopped off at, we were able to jump off the boat, go for a swim. And the third one, there are some bars lined along the beach over here. And it's just a really beautiful spot. And what I just love about these tours is that you visit places that I never would have even heard of, never mind come and visited. So it's a really, really good way to just see some more different places to Greece. And it is now time to board back to the mainland. But that has been an absolutely incredible trip. So before we head back to the hotel, we've decided to come into Kos Old Town just for a little wander around and see what there is to see. Because I've read online, it's actually a really beautiful old place with like loads of history and some really cute buildings that I want to go and check out. Okay, so this is called the Ancient Agora, which is a Greek marketplace and it is 2,400 years old. As you can see, there is not a whole lot of it remaining, but interestingly, a lot of this is actually under where we are standing today. And around the entire town. So when you're walking around the streets of Kos, you're actually walking around on an old market. It's pretty cool. Oh, well, we have found it. This is the plane tree of Hippocrates. 
Have I seen that right? Hippocrates. Hippocrates. <laughs> Why did I keep saying that wrong? And it is apparently where he taught his pupils, like, back in the day. This tree they think is around maybe 500 years old, but it could be replacing the original that would be like thousands of years old. They've got that tree well held up, haven't they? It actually kind of reminds me of the Wampum Willow. I feel like if they remove all those structures, it's just gonna <laughs> swing its arms all around. Branches, ooh, maybe create some magic. Well, that is not something I was expecting to find. That's one of the most unique things I've ever seen. I don't know whether it is like, random or whether these are drawings of people that live in the house but it's almost like pieces of concrete that are sticking out of the wall that has been drawn on and they're really good aren't they yeah they're really good really really good i mean they're actually so good that the camera was picking up facial recognition on them that's very good very cool very quirky I just don't understand how this is going to be warm. I kind of feel like I refuse to believe it. It's so, well, it's warm, but that wind is bitter. Like, when the wind hits you, it is, like, cold. So I think we've managed to find the thermal spa, finally. Um, it just looks like the seaside, to be honest, but we did read online that at the bottom of a heart attack hill, as someone coined it on TripAdvisor, we drive all the way down this proper narrow winding road. And then we get down to this little bit. Apparently there's some spring pools with some like geothermal activity. It's sea temperature on one side and then every now and again you get like a jet of warm water. Here, as Gemma said, it's not so warm today. It is very, very windy and I'm looking at the sea spray and it is not say, looking very inviting at all. And also it's high tide. Oh look, there's people over there. That must be where it's warm. Okay. They're sitting in a little pool. Okay. Oh, and they look warm. Let's yes. get going. Okay, exactly. let's go and try that bit. There's a little bit more sheltered here, just beneath these rocks. But it's pretty cool, there's like a little man-made kind of rock pool area. And I'm guessing that just collects all the geothermal water. You excited to get in? Well, I'm guessing it's warm. Yeah, let's go. Like they're still in there. Yeah, it does smell a bit sulfury, so that's a good sign. Yep. Either that or someone's eating an egg sandwich. All right, what's the verdict? Oh, I'm back in leaves. Oh, wow, that's warm. Okay, I was not expecting it to be that warm. That's amazing, wow. Look at that, not even flinching. Yeah. It easily must be about 30 to 35 degrees. That's very nice. Yeah. So there's like streams of water coming down out the mountain there. Wow. That must be where it's coming from. Isn't it so cool how this happens? I know, just naturally. It's so cool. I mean, whoever built that house has got it sorted. I know, we don't need people have water. Don't need to worry about British gas coming knocking. Oh, that's amazing. It's like a proper jacuzzi. Can't stand up because it's so windy and cold. <laughs> We're just like wee bottom feeders <laughs> navigating around. Well, I've got to say that's possibly one of the coolest places I've ever been to and the most unique because I just love how like raw and rugged it is. There was absolutely no man-made structures in the actual rock pool itself. The warm water just comes trickling out from underground and it's just so warm. I would say though, we got here for nine o'clock and there was only two other people there. Just as we were walking away there, there's a big group arrived and it's about half past nine now. So I think if you do want to get it to yourself, you need to get here first thing in the morning because I've seen videos of it online and it is very, very busy, which is imagine later in the afternoon when all the tour buses actually start to arrive as well. Well, it's typical that we chose today to go and bathe in silver because we are out all day at meetings and then we've got a nice sunset tonight. So I hope to go to these meetings smelling like egg. On the way up. We actually were a little bit naughty because the person that we rented the bike from was like, oh no, no, I wouldn't recommend going up that road, like go this other way. And we were like, oh, it's gonna take so much longer. We're gonna be going along more of like a motorway. Like they're both windy, steep roads. Like at the end of the day, this is up a mountain. So like we're gonna have to climb up it some way. So we decided to take it and it was actually fine. Like, I don't really know why. I mean, I don't know how much better the other would have, would have been, but I don't know why he told us not to come up this way. It was a little bit of hairpin bends with about 20 kilometers an hour being our max speed, but little Scoopster made it up no bother and the views were absolutely spectacular the whole way up. 
So we have decided to finish off our trip to Kos with a trip up to Zia, which is a really popular sunset spot on the island. And I can see why it's like such a quaint little town. It's sort of hidden in amongst all the forest. And it's like filled with like little shops, tavernas, and there's only actually about 200 people that live up here. It sits around 800 plus meters above sea level. So it is also a bit colder up here, especially today, because it's quite windy. But it's just absolutely beautiful. And the views here are just breathtaking. We have just stumbled across this cute little bar with the prime spot to watch the sunset. Got a little Coke Zero coming. And I was just saying I'm getting major Santorini vibes here because there's like big coaches rattling past this very bar along these wee cobbled streets and just dropping more and more tourists off by the second. And in Santorini when we went there it seemed as if the entire island all kind of flocked towards the western side of the island for sunset because the view was just spectacular. And I think this is probably definitely the most popular sunset spot, I guess, which is why everyone's just coming up here for it. One thing I do love about Greece is just there's cats everywhere. And so before that sun completely sets, we've still got some daylight. I thought it's the perfect time to tell you about this secret mission that we've been working on all week. I am so tired from it. As you can tell, I've been spending too much time in the sun on a scooter. I've got saddle <laughs> sores, my face is red, but it's been so worth it. What have we been doing? So as you might remember, we actually got engaged at the start of the year, which was a huge shock to me, a huge shock to our friends and family. And I think what shocked everyone more is that we are thinking of getting married sooner rather than later. We'd always thought that we wanted to get married in Bali and and when we got engaged we actually sat down and thought about the logistics of it and we thought coming from Scotland that is just really not gonna happen really. So since going to Kefalonia last year we absolutely fell in love with it. We actually saw a wedding happening on one of the beaches there and we were like oh that is that is a bit of me that is so stunning. So we thought Greece may be the destination that we want to get married in and we decided on course because it's relatively cheaper to get to Kos from Glasgow and that would be easier for our family and friends and the main thing that we want from this is to bring all of our family and friends together and go on a trip together because we don't really get to spend much time with everyone together we're always on the road and that would mean a lot to us to have everyone there be on a holiday together and hopefully be in the sun together. I know. We have been working our butts off the past few days just basically flying <laughs> around every wedding venue and we've got a few contenders. We're yeah. not going to tell you where it is yet and we're not going to tell you if we've decided that Kos is the place because we're still thinking a few other islands. Yeah. But we're quite excited. It's been a very, very good trip and a very it fruitful has. one. And I'm very glad we came. We have our cosy little home on wheels back and we're really buzzing about it, aren't we? Very much so, I know. What a holiday that's been, but I'm so glad to be back in Ellie. And it was a little bit of a repair bill. It was about, oh, I don't even know to be honest, it was four new it. brake pads basically, but we also got the spare tire bit fixed. Um, and since then, we've also installed a brand new security system, which I'm very excited to share with you next week. But where are we going? We have got a few Scottish road trips planned and we are hitting the road today. The weather is looking promising and hopefully it's gonna stay that way for the next couple of weeks. So we are really buzzing and we're gonna take you along with us. But for now, we're gonna say goodbye and we'll see you next week. Yes, yeah, so if you didn't like this video guys, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and and if you're new around here, why not hit subscribe as well and we'll see you again in the next one. See ya!